the guest Paul from Ash and Phoenix. New comic book day for a week of August tenth or sorry, right now. Yay. This episode brought to you by Campfire Ashes. New Yay. episode is out now, but you'll be able to catch a preview episode of this um this yes. episode, preview episode of this episode dropping on Friday. Right here on this channel. Yay. If you like it more, check us out. Hey guys, it's Tim from Team Ashen, Capes and Scalves, the comic book store. Paul and Tim do a thing. I'm here to talk about trades. You guys ready? We've got Spawn Compendium 3. It's floppy, so you can't kill a man with it. I know that was the number one question. Uh, but Compendium 3, this gets you up to issue 150. Wow. That's pretty good. We got the New Day Power of Positivity. This was two massive issues thrown together. Uh, pretty cool story. We got Black Sad, They All Fall Down, Part 1. I love Black, Black Sad. I have not read this specific one, but book's great if you haven't ever checked it out. The art is amazing. Deathstroke, Inc., Volume 1. We read a little bit of this series when it first came out. Uh, I enjoyed that. I did not keep up with it, but it seems like it kind of goes some cool places. Batman vs. Robin, Road to War. This covers a bunch of Detective Comics issues. Which I don't know that we read. <laughs> the Last Annihilation. This is some Guardian stuff from 2020 and a couple of tie-in books as well. Um, I mean, Annihilation in general was a pretty cool story. I don't know about this update, but hey, Annihilation was cool. Shang-Chi, Family of Origin. This is Volume 3. This book has been pretty stellar. Every time I come back to it, I enjoy it. We got Kirby, Manga Mania. This is Volume 5 uh, for the Kirby enthusiast in your life. We got Creeping. I don't know what this is, but it looks pretty cool. Creeping. It has to do with the internet and a social media challenge. And I'm assuming lots of horror. I'm in. We've got The Haunts of Fear, speaking of horror. Some classic EC uh, with a demon bull and fighting a bullfighter. That's always great. And finally, I've got from Jack Kirby, Commandi, the boy, last boy on Earth. And uh, this is volume one. I'm assuming this will take two volumes to finish. Actually, maybe more. I'm trying to remember how far this went. Maybe it went like 80 issues or something. So, okay. But yeah, these are really cool. I like these Jack Kirby omnibus kind of trades that they put out. They're super good. So yeah, if you've never read Commandi, oh man, read Commandi. It's weird. First up, we have Slumber, issue number six. Oh man, this is it's a messed up issue. Like, you look on the back. Uh, basically, uh, we are at the end of the first arc. I thought this was a six-issue mini. Apparently, it's an ongoing. So we are at the end of the first arc where um, a lot hits the fan. Um, our main character confronts the villain but things just don't go the way they're supposed to go many many things um kind of splinter off and we have a lot of stuff kind of opening the world into what is going on uh we do get some uh some concrete endings to some stuff but man not much uh this just opens up a lot more questions which is kind of what a first trade is supposed to do it's going to uh, uh give you uh, a general direction on where we're going to be going next um, as it does in the very last scene of this book. And then um, all of the directions we might be going later. This is really, really good. The storytelling is very, very smart, very, very fun. And you just don't quite see where it's going um, until it gets there. And I love that. It's really good story storytelling, really smart. The arc really lends itself to the book. And I can't wait for more of this series. So you should definitely check it out. Uh, the trade comes out in, like, October. All right, guys, time for my first book, and it's Predator number one. It's written by Ed Brisson with art by Kev Walker. Um, pretty cool story here. I like the timing of this coming out with the Prey movie on Hulu, which, by the way, was awesome. This book, also pretty awesome. It takes place in the near future. I believe it's in 2040s, 2050s. Uh, it's two stories that you're focusing on. It is a young girl, very young. Um, who survives an attack from a predator and then her future self trying to hunt predators and it's a pretty cool dynamic of somebody having a little more success trying to track down predators and ultimately fighting them pretty cool story i like the ideas presented here the art is really cool the violence when it happens is really top notch 
Um, it's a pretty interesting story, and I like different stories. With the Predator, you can tell all kinds of stories. Same thing with Aliens, but Predator more so because there's a code of honor kind of with them. I think this was done very, very well. And I'm curious to see where it goes. I'm definitely in for more. And uh, if you like Brisson, Brisson always good. He always bring it. So um, I can tell you, this is a good one to read. Check it out. And my pick of the week, it is The Deadliest Bouquet, issue number one. Uh, this is kind of an interesting book. The best way to describe it is Four Brothers, um, but they're three sisters. Uh, the movie Four Brothers from Mark, Mark Wahlberg and uh, Tyrese. and uh, this is, It's just that kind of book where you have um, uh, a daughter taking care of her, um, her mother with all of the rest of her siblings kind of estranged from each other. And there is a murder of the mother. And um, everybody is kind of pulled violently back together as they try to solve what is going on at the same time to try to work on their own relationships uh, moving forward. Uh, the three sisters obviously couldn't be any more different than each other. Um, and there's a lot of question marks, especially their upbringing and things. Uh, it, it's, it's really, really good. There's secrets. There's intrigue. There is just random violence um, and three very uh, interestingly fleshed out characters that you're going to kind of go one way or the other. Um, but yeah, the art is fantastic. The story writing uh, was a little slow. Um, hopefully the next issues really kind of pick up as to where the story is going to be going because we don't have a clear path on that quite yet, um, which kind of happens in some image books. But I mean, it's still a good story to read. And uh, you should definitely check it out. All right, time for my pick of the week. Paul, do you know my pick of the week? Not a clue. That's right. It's Tom King's Love Everlasting. Oh, cool. Love Everlasting is a very strange concept of a book. And it's a hard sell, I would think. So I'm very pumped that they pulled this off. Um, the art is awesome. It looks old-timey. Uh, Elsa Cher Chartier, I'm guessing. I'm sure that's wrong. But the art is amazing. It is like this. And we have basically a classic romance comic where the woman kind of pines over the man and maybe she gets him, maybe she doesn't. But what we've slowly realized, because there's a couple of different stories in here, all with the same main character. And it's almost like every time she finds love, a new story starts over and she has the memories of her previous romantic endeavor. So she's like, wait a minute, where's the guy I was just trying to be with who's this guy but i have feelings for this guy she goes on this adventure and she's basically trapped in a groundhog day style loop where she is doomed to fall in love over and over again very strange very well done though the story feels correct it feels like it's a you know like a 50s kind of romance book if you've never read them they are pretty amazing um sometimes very strange uh, this has uh, captures a lot of those feels, but the art is what really sells it. It makes it feel of that time, and I think if you had a more realistic style, this definitely would not work. Um, but it is really cool, really good, really weird, and I I wouldn't even know how to navigate this if I was writing it. I wouldn't even know where to take this. It would confuse the hell out of me. I had a lot of fun reading it. I definitely have no idea where this is going to go, and I'm on for the ride, so... If you want something weird and awesome, check it out. All right, guys, that is it. Thank you again for checking out this video. Make sure you check out all the other nonsense Paul and I do. He's got a new podcast coming out, The Campfire Ashes. The new episode is out very soon. Friday, right? No, Friday. It came out Friday. Friday, whatever. I, this Friday, we just hit, Friday just passed. New episode. Episode four is in two weeks. Yes, there you go. That's the one I, I'm early. I'm early, but check them all out. I've listened to the other three. They're great. Well, they're pretty good. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're fun. Definitely check them out. Uh, I, I like uh, your production on it, Paul. It's very good. Oh, thank you. Everything is, everything's coming together. He's he's asking me, because I've podcasted for way too many years, and he's like, well, asking me podcast. I'm like, oh, man, who knows, right? It's, <laughs> it's the Wild West of podcasting when I started. Oh, who knows? The analytics. Who can trust them? But... Uh, <laughs> That's why YouTube, he's used to YouTube analytics, so you can kind of see it. Podcast analytics. But uh, definitely help Paul out. It's a little better nowadays. You can see some analytics. Just 
go visit Paul. Check out his stories. They're fun. Also, Justina there. If you remember Justina, Justina, great. Uh, Justina's the new one, right? In two weeks? Yes. In two weeks, Justina, check it out. Now, Paul. Eh. Um, I like to turn on him like that. Anyways, that's it. I'm rambling. Goodbye. <laughs>